Hey guys. Okay, it's late, very, very late at night, middle of the snowstorm. I'm really, really tired. I'm killing time. And I thought, well, if we're going to really do this webinar or, you know, live uh, Facebook deal, um, I need to give you all a heads up what you're all going to need in advance. Okay? And if there's only two or three of you all, that's fine. Then the rest of you all, whenever you just come back and you're, you watch us at a later date. The drawback is, is that if you miss me doing this live, then what's going to happen is you can't ask me questions live. I'll see your questions on the screen, I'll read it live, and then um, and then I'll answer your question, and uh, we can go at it from there. Um, but here we got tin snips. These are also great for cutting uh, this, this mat board here. We'll get into the mat board in a minute. Uh, pliers. And then needle nose pliers. These are great. If you don't have a pair, that's fine, but they sure make work a lot easier. Um, especially when you're in tight, tight spaces. Okay. You're going to need a hammer. You're going to need a pencil. Um, you're going to need a ruler. I am old school, so you're going to need an inch ruler. As you can see, this is in inches. And then you're going to need this. It's a, it's a chisel, but it's, it's not a traditional chisel. This is used traditionally on floors to, to scrape up tile and scrape up old cement to clean uh, cement slabs to put down new, new tile. However, we're going to use this to score metal. I don't know how many of you all know what scoring is, but scoring is when we will take this, put it on top of the tin, and then we're going to take a hammer and we're going to pound with the hammer down on this. And then what it will do is it will create a seam like you see here. And this seam allows us to fold this real easy. Okay? So we get nice, clean corners. Okay? Now you'll need some kind of tin uh, for shielding. Uh, I'm not going to be using any juice can lids at all. Um, let's see here. And then this mat board here, it takes four of these pieces to equal one of these. These are the spacers that come with the magnet. I only have so many of these, so I can't keep using these. So four, four of these equals one of these. As you can see here, press down on it with my fingers here. You'll see it's the same height now. Okay, so you're going to need four of these stacked on top of each other. So it's going to be, so the way you're going to use these when we get down to the nitty gritty is that you're going to be building a box like this. I just did one of these tonight. It's a dry run. Just I haven't built one of these in quite a while. I even goofed up. Uh, not by much, but a little bit. It's important. Uh, so this is a five-sided box instead of six. The six side is wide open. There's the raw magnet. And so you see I made a box around the magnet and the back and left the front door wide open. And here we have, right here, you can see those cardboard spacers right there. There's four of them here, four of them here. But where it goofed up, I didn't have enough space to put four here or four there. But this, the sides are not quite as important, but still, I like to make this perfect. Um, we are dealing with, dealing with magnetics after all. and It's kind of tricky stuff if you don't do it right. Um, oh, and then most importantly, I said we don't want this magnet touching this metal anywhere. Well, gee, did anybody here pick up a flaw, a mistake, you know, an error in my calculations here about isolating this magnet? Because we don't want this magnet touching this metal anywhere. Well, you should have. If you didn't, I'll tell you what it is. This magnet 
would normally be touching the back side of this. But I put four of these on the bottom. You just can't see them. So right down here on the back side, there are four of these or a quarter of an inch. So this magnet truly is isolated. It's not touching the metal anywhere. So there's cardboard underneath the left and the right, and the top and the bottom, and on the back side down here. So anyway, so you gotta make sure this magnet doesn't touch the metal, because once the magnet touches the metal, it starts to, the flux starts to travel. It just literally travels down the metal, and that's bad. So anyway, so this is my first dry run making one of these again. I haven't made one of these in a long time. So, but you gotta build four of these. Three more of these anyway. Um, then, after you build this, now I have to build, or we, we've got to build another box around this box. So we're going to have a box within a box within a box. A metal box within a metal box within a metal box. And each time we build a box, we have to add this thickness here, this quarter of an inch thickness. So we want to make sure we have the spacers. So if you build this tight, and really, really tight, there won't be much bulk to this. It'll be pretty darn good. Um, let's see here, let's see here, over here, there was the second stator I ever built. And as you can see, it's not very bulky. It's uh, still pretty compact. Um, it really is. So, um, just keep all your tolerances tight, keep your measurement, oops, keep your measurements really tight and, uh, everything should go, go just fine. Okay, well, that's it, let me not waste any more of your time. Um, I can't think of anything else to share with you here, so make sure you got some, your tin, and, uh, a hammer, you're gonna need your hammer, and... If you can't find one of these, you can use um, a chisel, um, or you can use something like this and put it on there and bang it, but I wouldn't be hitting this because I'd damage it, okay? Um, also, if you can, if you want to make sure your lines are straight, you might want to have one of these. Um, it's a square. And this goes inside of here. I'm holding the phone so I can't put it in there. But this goes inside of this here. Yeah, in that slot. And this ensures that your lines are square. So. Um, it's a modification on a carpenter square. Okay, that's it. I can't think of anything else. So. Tomorrow night or Wednesday night or whenever. Uh, we'll start this and see how many people join. What I'll do is I'll start the webinar like 10 minutes early and it'll just be nothing. And uh, they'll give people 10 minutes to um, get to their desk or wherever they're going to be at. And uh, then after that 10 minutes, then I'll start. Alrighty, that's it. I'm going to go to bed. I am really tired. I'm sure my voice sounds like I've got one foot in the grave and one foot out of the grave the way I sound tonight. Because I am. I'm exhausted. I've had a hard day today. Alrighty. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll talk with you all again. Probably within the next 24 hours. Or 72 hours. Take care. And thank you for watching.